Uh, Mr. Scarrow had a work emergency, so he is unable to join us today. So we'll go ahead and get started. <coughs> if that's all right. I'm good. A okay, first agenda item up that we had was controversial issues in the classroom. That was one of the proposed policies. And I know at the last policy committee meeting, we talked about the fact that we're still in that process of considering um, shifting over to NEOLA. So one of the questions that we had is what does it look like compared mm -hmm. to NEOLA? And yep. Uh, what was interesting is all those policies from the um, will site, which was pulled from Devin and requested to look, it looks like they were originally copy and pasted from Neola with some minor changes. So yep. what Jody did is she laid out this um, policy with the Neola language on the right, and then the proposed LPARM policy, which was the, you know, taken from will, and she highlighted in yellow the differences from the NEOLA policy and the other policy, which that's why I'm pretty sure they were just copying and pasted originally in the tweet because a lot of the language is exactly the same. Right. Yeah, um, I noticed that as well. If that makes sense, yeah. So I think in, in discussing this, and there was some concern, uh, and Sarah wasn't able to make the, the meeting today because we changed the time and she had some other things booked, but I think there was some concern related to, you know, would this type of policy discourage or make teachers or instructors concerned about even having controversial issues or topics brought up in classes, or will it lead to a slippery slope of parents just opting out of mm. any class that, like social studies classes, well, that's a controversial issue, so I don't want my kid to be exposed to that, or um, you know, I don't like this current event because, you know, I don't like how it's being portrayed in media or things like that, which, um, you know, those are concerns that are out there that I wanted to share. But I do feel the policy, Neola has it, it's a common policy right. that is out there. And I think the purpose of it, I really like the first paragraph where it says the board believes that the consideration of controversial issues has a legitimate place in the instructional program of the district. Agreed. And so I, I think that's important. I think the other piece, which, and it does define what a controversial issue yeah. is. Yeah. So for the purpose, it's a country is a topic on which opposing points of view have been promulgated by responsible opinion, and the issue is likely to arouse both support and opposition in the community. Now, in discussing this with Sarah, um, you know, is that a? I, I don't know if you can define anything better than that, but you will have a wide variance. For example, there are people, I'm sure in our community that feel that the earth being a globe is a controversial issue because they believe the earth is flat. Well, there's still and, conspiracy theories out there all yeah. over the place right. that think that 9-11 didn't happen, that it was, right. you know, it was not planes and, you know, like th that's still out there. Correct. Which makes me insane. Or that Sandy Hook was a conspiracy, right? right? You've seen the right. lawsuits and you see that. Right. And it does, and I don't know how people go down those rabbit holes and how they get there, but I would feel that those are not, would not be considered promulgated by responsible opinion. Right. And obviously that's going to use subjectivity and so forth. Yeah, the only but. word that there that kind of popped out was responsible. <laughs> that's that's such a, it, you know, like that's an that's a subjective word, um, yeah. but. And it is, let's see, this is a man. All right, so, but again, I think there, yeah, for purposes of the policy, it's a position that may have built on social personal. Yeah, so they're pretty, pretty similar in all of that. Um, yeah. This one does include language. I don't know why they didn't include this does not cause a substantial disruption in the school environment. Maybe that's because they will just didn't feel that that was as important or not that it's okay. Well, it it's, it's really similar to the, the last one on ours does not create a hostile school environment. It, substantial disruption sure. is similar to hostile. I think, guess, I guess we need to decide which word we want to use there. A group of words because to me they're similar yeah well now let me ask a question on the mm -hmm. yola versus bars and will and all that 
we're looking at Neola, I think we're leaning towards liking right. it. Right. What is the what is the timeline of of introducing a new Elkhorn policy versus bringing in Neola, which this would be a part of anyway? Like, are we looking at weeks difference, months? To, I mean, year plus. Yeah, it's going to take. They four say years a transition run. over is a one to two years, yeah. <clears throat> and so it'll take that one just to even get. Yeah. Just, okay. So I think it's. So if you want this type of policy yeah. in place, we should. Right. So okay. We want should to move okay. forward with it. Right. Yeah. And move forward with okay. it, and then. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Because yeah. it is a heavy lift when you. If yeah. You, if we decide yeah. to transition over, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know if there was like we could say okay we're moving to Neola and you know we this one's so similar we'll just. Get this one in quick, but if it's going to take over a year, we'll okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Do we even bother with it? Right, exactly. If going with it? Right. If we now we function since 1887, I guess without a con controversial issues policy, right? You know, right. In yeah. place, but if we want that policy in place, you know, I think it's go ahead probably more necessary to. Yeah, it's it time. It's, 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 it's definitely <laughs> time to get something in there. <laughs> Um, I did like the language on the NEOLA policy for um, under letter A um, for level of maturity of the students. Um, ours um, addresses it a little bit, um, but we're we're focusing more on age appropriate. And I feel like I like the level of maturity wording a little better. Right. Um, because kids mature at different ages, yeah, you know, one 14 year old versus another 14 year old level of maturity is very different. So right. um, I had a 14 year old that was going on 35. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's just every kid is different. So I do like the, the language there, better of level of maturity. I do too. And, and it allows you to differentiate and have different conversations. Yes. With different groups based on what that. Yes. Is. Yeah. Yes. Um, One thing um, I wanted a little bit, maybe more definition um, on the NIOLA policy it says do not does not cause a substantial disruption. Ours says hostile school environment, which I think. What, which I should say, I don't. Think, I wouldn't yeah. title it as ours. Right, it's it's not exactly. It's the, just the one, the yeah, proposed, the proposed, yeah, template, the yeah. proposed, um, so hostile school environment, which I guess is a little bit more able to be defined in people's minds. But what does substantial disruption mean? Um, and yeah, so this is based on case law, okay, and it's related to. It's, it, and it, it's one of those that is a little bit more vague term, but so for example, in dress code policies and so forth, okay. you often can't restrict something unless it's specifically restricted, unless it causes a substantial disruption okay. to the learning environment. So then that becomes the, there is the burden placed on the administrator when making that decision. Okay. What is a substantial disruption? Usually it's, okay. Um, forms of harassment, but not just like one case. Well, will this kid pick on? That's usually not sufficient. Okay. When you go to court, a judge is going to want to see, you know, we had a walkout. We had, okay. you so know, where learning was impeded. Substantial disruption is based on case law. We have that to fall back on. Kind of definition, okay. yeah. And okay. that's what, and so they're, the principles are used to that legal terminology, terminology okay. substantial disruption. Okay, then yeah. I'm fine with that. But I'll tell you, every judge may have a different opinion on sure. what, what it's not a clear black and white yeah. definition. Yep. And that may be why, as we go through this, why they said a hostile school environment may be a lower threshold. Oh, okay. Meaning, yeah, sure. I have this kid pick, you know, what is, mm -hmm. to what level is considered hostile. But I'm, I haven't seen that used as a as a legal term. In, uh, okay, so then we should probably point. stick with the substantial disruption. Yep. Or we could put does not causing substantial disruption or hostile school environment. Yeah. And then it's I don't think it's not like I yeah. It's not an either or. Yeah, I don't. Um yeah, I don't say it either way. Um let's see. One thing that's on the proposed 
says encourages analytical thinking and open mindedness. Um, I like the I like the uh, verbiage of analytical thinking. Um, encourages analytical thinking and open mindedness, um, like ours says, and is conducted in a spirit of scholarly inquiry. I like that. Yeah. But I'd like to add in to the Neola the analytical thinking verbiage. Sure. Um, don't you agree? Yeah, that's great. I like that. Great um, and then on the highlighted paragraph on that first page, controversial issues may not be initiated by a source outside the schools unless prior approval. Can you give me an example of how that would happen? Yeah, um, that would be like a assembly. Oh, topic like you have uh, okay. an assembly on suicide prevention. Well, you may have some people. Well, I think that's a controversial issue. If that, oh. works, if that makes sense. So, okay. Um, All right. Bullying and harassment. Or, okay. I mean, I'm just trying to think of yeah, things yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. I just was trying to. It's probably also referred to. Well, I'll tell you one that I did get complaints on having. Now, the first time you came and presented, uh, Senator Ron Johnson did a fabulous oh, job right. and he didn't yes. get controversial at all. Yep. The second time he came, I can't say the same. He got very political on, you know, it wasn't just about being a, a senator. He got very much on his political mm -hmm. topics mm -hmm. with the students and sure. making the political arguments. So, was that because he was speaking specifically to government students? No. No. Mm -hmm. It was, I, I don't he's just in a different mindset like or a different that. mode at yeah. the time. Sure. I, I don't know. Because yeah. the, the first time he really, yeah, so there's two ways to do it. Yep. And, and so I did get email complaints that, sure. you know, why did you know, so-and-so come in? But it was still by an invite. And so we're, I yep. don't know if I, if you have a sitting senator for your state, right? I don't think that I would say no, you can't come. But I would say that's an instance where the same person created no controversy the first time, but yeah. the second time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. I don't know. Um, one thing I noticed that was a, that was not part of the NEOLA that's in the proposed was uh, on the second page, educators shall provide effective notice to parents in advance of controversial issues being instructed in the classroom. Um, I didn't see that addressed in the NEOLA, unless I missed it. No, um, where, where else? On the second page, like second paragraph. Um, in the discussion, that next paragraph, the board recognizes a certain Oh. Educators shall provide effective notice to parents in advance yeah. of controversial issues being introduced. Yeah, structure. so this is different in that this paragraph, I think, covers that. Let's see. Okay. Still gives the parents the opt out. Right. The opt out is still there, but the, the notice is not, I don't think, addressed in the Viola <clears throat> side. So, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, so, and how do you feel about that, Adam? Well, it's, if after careful personal review, pro, well, I think I looped, I, I looped it all in together, but you're right, it doesn't give. It doesn't address the it notice. Doesn't affect, it does not address the notice, you're right. And then there's a whole paragraph on it. My, my concern means. with this right here is the great discrepancy that individuals have in regards to what they consider to be correct. One, one person could think that it's not controversial. And then, yeah, I agree. So to me, it feels like that's going to be a whole lot of work on the teacher's parts to be notifying them literally every time <laughs> they talk about just about well, anything. They're not anymore. clairvoyant. How are they supposed to? It, exactly. So, I'm okay that it doesn't, it's not in the Neola side. I just. I think the Neola side, it, just, it puts that responsibility, you know, on the parent, review the syllabus, review, if you don't right. like it, 
right. opt your kid out. It puts a, I think one of the concerns that Sarah had brought up to me, and I, I agree with this, is how much teachers' plates are already full. Mm -hmm. And they're right. extremely burdened from that. And I really feel that, look, we have Apex that we use at Sophos, we use it at Options. If you don't want them to be in seventh grade history because you're concerned over them talking about the civil rights in that time period and you think that's a controversial issue, then opt your kid out of seventh grade history and we can put you on Apex for seventh grade history and you can do it in the library. How are facts of history? Can, they're how still can that covered be in there, but there's... I know, but how can that be considered controversial? We don't have enough time for this conversation. <laughs> But the perfect response. <laughs> well, my concern is my concern is expecting the teacher to okay, the kid's gonna opt out of this unit. Yeah. Now we need you to go and plan an alternative activity right. for right. that kid to do. And that's just right. not a reasonable right. expectation. I like how the policy yeah. is it gives that right, right for the parents, which we've always advocated for. That's fine. If you yeah. You know, you don't want your kid to learn about evolution because you don't believe in that, even you know, from that science basis. Right. Then, unfortunately, whatever unit we opt them out to, yep. that's still going to be covered. Right. Um, but if you don't want them to be exposed to hearing in the classroom because you're concerned that the teacher teaching it will be provide undue influence, then here's the paper and book, or here's the other alternative mm -hmm. to that. I have had parents, which we cannot do, is where they wanted us to provide a biblical-based curriculum, which didn't speak to evolution at all. And say, That's well, you can, you can do that on your own. Absolutely. And you can opt them out. Absolutely. Of that you know, course, but I can't purchase it and provide it. Absolutely. That, um, I have to provide non-secular original instruction. Yeah. Yeah. Is in the proposed is is effective notice. I mean, I would consider that effective notice the the syllabus in the beginning of the year, the agenda. What do we call it? What do we? How do we call it? Learning the learning maps. I mean, that I would consider that effective notice because you're giving it at the beginning of the year. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yep. 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 The only thing I I'm a little bit worried about is. Um, like current events type of topics. Yeah. Because like in our social studies class, classes, we ask our teachers to make those then and now kind of considerations, sure. right? Sure. And bring in in things that are happening. And and the other piece here, as far as effective notice goes, is you're having a discussion and the kid brings up a topic. Exactly. That There's no way. could be considered. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. you, it's hard to control yeah. those pieces. Agreed. You know? Yeah, um, I like, uh, other than the couple of comments that I made on the new one, I, I like the way the new one is written. Um, as long as we can adopt in the blue section that I'm assuming Jody wrote <laughs> for us. Um, oh, I put that. Or you did? Okay. I just typed that in there because there was a request to look at yep. related to the, which we already, that's our policy related to Got it. material distribution. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can put it in here as a reminder if we want, but I, if that's, we already have a that's policy. That's somewhere that else, it. but it, yeah, it, it covers it there. Um, and that's fine if we don't, we don't need to include it if it's already covered somewhere else. Um, but I don't, Adam, you had brought that up. Yeah, that's, and we can reference it there, right? Yeah, just, yeah it could be more of a script. reference. Um, but also relevant, or I, I don't know how we put the we see other policies. We do that cross reference at the bottom. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Um, Which I, I think you know. I was trying to think of. I think the. I think that covered. I think we're still fine. Yeah, I think we're fine, and I like the cross referencing because yep. Yep. when a parent is looking for something, you know, um, it or is helpful number. to mm -hmm. have that cross reference. <laughs> Or one. Or a board member. Or a board member. Yes. <laughs> I tried to find a couple things. This is so if I'm looking for that the distribution of the uh, those stickers or whatever, I'm looking in controversial topics first sure. for yeah, yeah. You know, just um, obviously distribution of materials would be the way to go, but my my Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. 
Yeah, as long as teachers are sticking to, you know, showing both sides of an argument and not trying to influence one way or the other, it's it's definitely an effective um, part of the learning process. Kids have to be able to make up their minds on their own. You know, they have to be able to draw their own conclusions and form their own opinions. Where where teachers get stuck, where it can be hard, is when <laughs> an opinion is expressed out loud in class, which is by a student, you mean? Yeah, in particular, by a student, which is scientifically known to be false oh, or sure. Sure. to be really out of bounds. And they have to try to, well, if it's you know, how do you navigate false, that? Or, then they have the right to prove that it's false. You know what I mean? Or to just say, and here's the other side. Yes. You know, yeah. Yep. That's just right. Like, you know, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, I like with those minor changes that we talked about. I'm, I, I think I really uh, like the Neil yeah. policy. To give an example, I was watching Young Sheldon last night. And this is where I think and this is relevant in the sense of um, the comparison because it's when sometimes when we just say, well, here's the other side, it gives, especially depending oh, on the sure. age of the student. Yep. It gives the impression that, like, oh, yeah, it's a 50-50 chance. And he was yes. in a debate with uh, his minister on a, a topic. Really yeah. too, and he said, well, that's just wrong because your proposition, the way you're outlining it, is saying that there's a 50-50 chance. And he said, you could tell me that, hey, when you get home, he said, when I get home, I might have a million dollars sitting on my bed. Uh -huh. Or I might not. And that's a 50-50 chance that I have a million dollars. But that would be ridiculous because you know there's not a 50-50 likelihood that there's a million dollars sitting on my bed. But sometimes on the topics or the issues, yeah. what's brought up is so out of that. It's, you don't have to be careful as an educator as yeah. well not yeah. to give the impression that, oh, yes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the yeah, mm -hmm. half the world might think the world. You know, it, it's, it's flat. I hate to keep going to that. If there's right. someone online that's a flat earther, I'm sorry. But it is one that does come up. And I know we chuckled as I was watching even, uh, yeah, I won't get into it, but it's more yeah. common than you think. Yeah, yeah. That's out there. So, I, I, but I think the policy doesn't restrict, it doesn't prohibit people from, you know, sharing that and bringing those comments up or facilitating the discussions. Yeah. Um, Do we still have a debate team? No. We don't. Mm -mm. Right. Yeah, we've incorporated it into um, English and into the social studies. Those types of not a debate team, right? But like the debate process. Do, do high schools still compete in debate? I don't know. I don't. We um, do we did the forensics club. Mm. Or is that selective? No, it's selective, but so, you have to choose that category. Yeah, so debate would be oh, within the forensics. forensics. So we have forensics. So if you had enough kids, kind of like within Skills USA, there's a huge umbrella of different competitions they could do. So if we had a group of kids that wanted to do debate within forensics club, they could do that. I believe forensics still runs oh, debates. Yeah. Even within FFA, yeah, I yeah, believe yeah. they have categories of debate mm -hmm. within there. Yeah. So do the teachers give opportunity for kids to have debate in the classroom? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's why I say it was built in. Got it. It's yeah. part of the speech standards. Okay. And presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. if, we're, if we're adopting, if we're looking to adopt a proposed policy, let's just call it three weeks, six weeks from now versus nearly a year from now. I know, but can't we just take the Neola one? I mean, is that what, and then can't, just, can't we just use it? Put like in those, those modified changes, and I think we're within the ten percent threshold. Anyway. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I think we've got those changes notated, and we can. Do you want us to take it for a first reading? As discussed. Yeah. Are, are we taking out the paragraph about the effective notice thing? Are we taking all that out? I would, I, it's up to you guys. I would prefer to just stick with the, what Neola has. Yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah. Great. Me too. 
Yeah, I'm good with taking it to, uh, to a first reading. Yep. That's good. I agree. All right. Human growth, development instruction, parental notice, and opt out. So, um, a lot of this, the human growth and development is really governed by state statute. Correct. Um, we went through, highlighted the significant differences. So, Neola's follows very tightly. Will kind of added or took out some things. Um, well, I noticed number eight. Uh huh. I looked it up. It that number eight is in the state statute, but it's not in Neola's policy, which I thought was interesting too. So we should probably include that if we're going to go with Neola's and it's listed in the state statute. Yeah. And okay. this is pulled from the Donovan School District. So I wonder if their oh. board. Oh, they made it quick out. not to because mm -hmm. within the OLA policies, they'll give here's the proposed policy and you check, like you can check boxes of which components you want within the policy uh, and which ones you don't. So it may have been in the original, they chose not to include that. Oh, okay. But yeah, it definitely is in the state session. So you, you went, you saw Delamans in the OLA. And that's where we're that's what yes. we're going on. Yeah. Got yes. it. Okay. Thanks. And I, I yeah, I, awesome. I think the proposed policy that Elkhorn is looking at is word for word state statute. It is. Yeah. Because I looked at yeah. it today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you would on this one, you would say more on the left side, Jody. I would. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah I yeah. I agree. Um, and oh yeah, and the only reason we struck out was you struck out what wasn't in state correct, statute. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Doesn't way, that I just say that because it, it's not forming like an opinion yet. We should have it's just showing you the difference, right? Um, on the first page on number six, I don't know. Does media automatically include social media, or do we need to state social media separately? Because to me, social media has the biggest influence. That's a really good media call. would be any media. I would include social media. As okay. As, it literally has media in any medium. Okay. That's, All right. But we could certainly add that the impact of media, including social media. Yeah, I would. I would put social media in there. Okay. Just to be overly clear. Oh, and then can we? Can we change the word pupil to student? <laughs> it were. And the only reason I, I changed it to pupil was because that's how the that's statute reads. I know reads. that's I how know. the statute reads, but I also prefer. I prefer student. the word student. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I think they use. Pupils is so 1900. Exactly. <laughs> they, use, they actually use both. In the very first. Yeah. yeah. In the very first paragraph. <laughs> students and then well, then they start using the word pupil so it should be now. consistent yeah all right the only other thing that now letter f i wanted some guidance on oh. so okay the will version said reject the state statute says rebuff i'm fine with rebuff okay yeah. Yeah, I just I don't like deviating from state statute and policy too. Totally much. agree. Um, Not that state statute's better; it's just that's the law. So. so, on page three, um, the first paragraph after the G and H. The board authorizes the curriculum to include separation of students from members of the opposite sex. How are we determining opposite sex? Are we biological. using biological sex? <laughs> I mean, Boy, I we that. have to address it. <laughs> uh, the short answer is yes at that at this time, um, but I don't. Do you really want to clarify, or you just leave it and let us address it as needed? The only time we separate for opposite sex is in the fourth and fifth grade lessons to, I believe, correct? 
And then in eighth grade, when they talk about the different arts in science class. I'm sorry, but a boy going talk to about, about periods is science. not helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why it says opposite sex. Well, <laughs> I think if we if we said if we did say biological, right? Mm -hmm. That is how we would separate them. Yes. And regardless of how they identify, correct. We still have to separate them that way because physiologically, correct. That is what will be happening to them, correct. Unless. They do something about so I would like right. to define it as biological sex. Yeah. Does, does that open us up to anything? Well, my recommendation right now would be to just leave it as it is in the state statute. But if you want that biological, I don't really I, care. Um, I would support putting biological in there. I know for a fact that this has happened. Okay. And well, then, it is it was very disturbing for a male to have a biological female sitting next to them in class. Okay. We can put biological sex then. And they can always have the option to opt out if they're not comfortable right. being, right. you know, that I'm not identifying with that. I'm not comfortable looking like a female going into the and that's Health and I understand that I'm a biological male. And the I, opportunity to, to opt out protects us. Correct. Listen, you can you can opt out of that if, you, right. if you're that uncomfortable about it. But it also protects the kids that would be uncomfortable, although they can hurt as well. Like yeah, but like why would we be starting to opt out kids who are uncomfortable having a person of the uh, opposite? Because, even that that's starting because to be of the non-discrimination laws and our own non-discrimination policies. I, I would I would I'm, I'm with you, Julie. I think biological should be in there with the understanding that opt out. And then they can get instruction in a different way, I guess. Mm -hmm. we, I mean That's it. why do why do we need that right? Guys. Well, without it, or no, we're authorized to privilege include separation of the absence. So I it, I would read that, and I didn't read it at first, but it does. There could be confusion in 2023, 24 of, well, what's the opposite sex? And although I think. Well, it says sex, not gender. Okay. But is there, a, is is there a need for the board to authorize? Separation, regardless. That's what, I, that's what I'm asking. Oh. Like, is there a need for the board to say it's okay that we do this? Do, do we have to even say that? That's my question. That's a good point. Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, that's a really good Because according to like Title IX, right, it, it even has that in there that you can separate for human growth and development type of thing. Oh, it does. Yeah. Okay. So I don't I don't okay. know if we all right. Yeah. No. Maybe it out. It's not yeah. addressed in the Neola side. Thought we had a Title IX person here. Well then we don't even have to yeah, deal with right. that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah. That's even better. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's a good point. Then I'm then I'm fine taking that out. Yeah. Just but sure. when it was in there, I'm like, um, yeah. I mean, right. And then we would like to include the the section in blue that was added, right? We're looking at adding that. Yeah, this would be yeah, okay. Uh, addressing the human growth development curriculum or advisory committee, I guess. Yep, and that's pulling straight from state statute as well. Oh, it is okay. Then yeah, then let's include it. Yep. Did this one recently change? I don't know. Or I know there was a proposed change. So we'll double check and cross-reference that. But um, 
let's see, I have the dish of the price that let's say. So that like might be when you like yeah. miss a step. Oh, does it say anywhere where the this committee, the timeline of this committee, or the title? there is no timeline per state statute? Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't need to be re. Oh, yeah. There's nothing in there. We don't currently have one, right? We the, we last reviewed it. What was it? Dr. Bates was still on. correct. Yes, that, that's where I was. Yeah, it was before I came on the board. Mm -hmm. Now, the health standards are not going to be updated by DPI until this next year, which we draw upon to uh -huh. decide where these things go. So, if we take a look at what that rotation is and we make it in accordance with that, that might be logical. Okay. Because they do, like when we had to update it the last time, it's because language of things changes mm -hmm. and the medical knowledge changes. Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. things always have to be updated. Um, which is why the standards get updated too. That would make sense to coincide up with that. And that could be, a, that could be a best practice, right? That doesn't really be yeah. policy. It doesn't yeah. have to be. I think the last, the, the last time before yeah. that it was it was uh, over a decade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. So if that's coming up in next year, in the spring, this should be updated to the beginning of next year. Yeah. It makes sense to review when that gets yeah. 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 So it's not an active committee where, like, no. the fact that Dr. Bates has passed away it doesn't years matter. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Not happened. that it doesn't matter that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Got you. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they adopt. They they get together. They make updated recommendations mm -hmm. for the changes, and then that gets implemented. And so at the time that the, the state year, yeah. thing gets updated, is that when we would form the committee? Is that what you're suggesting? That's what we're proposing. That's what okay. Right. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. All right. Because it makes sense because then you can go on the most yep. up to date yep. standards yep. update. So sorry, if 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 these if and you know today things are rapidly changing, maybe even faster than DPI. Yep. Do we want to look at this as getting a committee together once a year, once every eight, two years? I think we could have um that, that curriculum council maybe make that decision if we okay. see something that comes to the curriculum council okay. and then it says hey maybe we need to relook at this because x y and z have come up awesome you know i, I feel yeah. like that's i don't know what your thoughts are that jason with us I, I think that makes a lot of sense yeah, yeah. cool yeah well for now we're just going to make these changes and i mean the science of human growth and reproduction really doesn't change i was just going to say <laughs> Pretty much not. Good point. Usually the language we around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, what those standards will be helpful for is like age recommendations of what's appropriate at certain age levels. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are we good to push this off to a first reading now? You think Joey with the changes we're gonna focus more on the one on the left hand yes, side? Correct. Yeah. 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 Are you comfortable since this is a brand new policy? Do you want me to keep the straight through and the blue showing the just, changes from Will or just no, show just it as put a it all just show it as yeah? yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, public access to records. This one is we do have a current school work policy. That's on the left hand side. Uh, this on the right is Miola, which we didn't highlight. Right. The difference between the two. This is one that I would recommend that we don't really, if we want to make the changes, go ahead and make them on the one on the left, but wait yeah. to adopt. You know, not that there's substantial differences there. Yeah, I didn't see substantial differences, but ours, the one major one that I saw mm -hmm. was that ours in point number two on the first page, um, the school board designates the positions of district administrator and district business manager. Whereas on the NEOLA policy, it says only it only addresses the district administrator. That's true. And everything does come through me on that. So mm -hmm. Bill will even refer it over to me and then I approve that. It was probably there because if somebody had like a request on a financial record, they could just go directly to Bill. But um, 
which when those come in, I just forward it to Bill anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, go ahead and so you know that. So I think it might be better just to, to, just to have leave it down to one. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So strike that district administrator as the legal official legal custodian. And most of our open records requests are HR office related. Like, yeah, I'd like a staff directory with all our emails. So playing like a little bit of devil's advocate here, <laughs> is it better to have two listed? Like, for example, if the district administrator was, was incapacitated for some reason, what sure. they put uh, or designate. So, on on a school structure standpoint say you became incapacitated, who then fills your position? Right now it would be uh, Bill. So okay, so do we need to state that or is that just already part of how the structure works and he becomes the acting? That's right, I think I'd put district administrator or designee. That would be consistent okay. with what we state in other policies. Okay, then I'm fine with yeah. the or designee. Because mm -hmm. it might not be. Correct. Right. You know, Bill's there, he's the most senior and has yeah. worked in that type of administrative leadership for some time. If we hire a newbie who sure comes it from might a bookkeeper not be background, the I'd probably yeah. look at might not be the, the curriculum director, so you point or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Um, on the second page on the Neola side, it looks like that paragraph that's in yellow might not be part of our proposed is that correct mm -hmm. the two the two yellow areas correct. is that something that are those two areas that we need to adopt into the one we're proposing what are your thoughts on that jason but yeah these were highlighted because we don't have right language related to that so i think it would make sense to go ahead and put yeah both of those in and I've done some searching in regards to the records retention schedule, and I can't see that the school board ever adopted one. So we probably should do that. Should okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, I would point out up here too that yeah, we definitely want the requests yep. made in writing. Yeah, absolutely. Requests that just, mm -hmm. which I've never received in oral. I've always told people just. Send yeah. it to me in email and I can fulfill that. Yeah. Um, this was our current fee schedule. I don't think there's really any need to modify or change that. Right. Um, other than I think we're and taking from the rule language to put it over to combine the rule. Yep. And the into one. Yeah. I mean, the largest cost on open records uh, becomes the, the time, time to yep. locate and pull the records, depending on that. Very few ask for things to be photocopied. Mm -hmm. Almost, I don't think I've had one where they wanted it photocopied. So it's usually mm -hmm. always just putting it into a PDF. Right. Um, Yeah, I'm fine with okay. those and the, changes. Yeah, the district costs, the actual man hour costs and, and labor costs may run quite a bit higher than what we can actually charge because if there's pieces that we have to redact, you can't charge for time to redact or you can't charge for legal to review it to redact, but you have a legal obligation to still mm -hmm. do that, if that makes sense. So I know when I was in New Glarus, I think, the board at one point they had a sixty thousand dollar legal fees related to open records requests mm -hmm. because of the nature of what they had to do in their redaction all that so that's why it's important mm -hmm. for board members to be cognizant they were getting a little they put out of bounds on their emails back and forth to each other on mm -hmm. certain topics and that's then that's why they brought in legal to the other one that have that cover, but we do a really good job with that, mm -hmm. to my knowledge. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. 
So are you good with sending that one for a first reading? Okay. All right, to review professional development training materials. So there is no meal policy. Part of this that we brought up is um, it's governed under open records okay. law. So it's probably why there is no policy because um, staff development or training materials would fall under the well, then do we open need records this? law. My opinion was no, okay. but um, but that was yeah, board's prerogative. Whatever you, I mean, if it's if falls you want under, to, this is what I guess we recommend that if it day. falls under the one that we just went over, eight twenty three, then it seems redundant to have another policy on it, right? What, what what would be the difference between uh, open records and parents having the right to access? Would they have to go through a process here? I would tell them make an open records request. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and yeah, you're going to be subject to whatever the costs are of providing that or locating that and putting it together. Yeah, if, if it's an open records request, then it's redundant. And I mean, even the language, you know, this request shall be granted compliance with applicable public that record laws. Suggesting. Okay. So, my You know, the only difference I would see is that is, is there a way to perhaps specify this language in the open records? So they have it, then it's all, all of its records encompasses training materials. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. So does I'm it, yeah. This and I, I don't, I didn't go back. Does, does the open records request language already include? <coughs> Training to that, that's what I was just looking for. But no, it's in, I mean, it one, it says recognized as all of its records as public records and documents subject to release. So that, would, that encompasses yep. all materials. Mm -hmm. This, uh, it just gives clarity that that is included within that. If that makes sense, if we felt that was necessary. But even in wills, it's, you know, reasonable. Blah, 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 blah. Request shall be granted in compliance with the applicable yeah, public records right law. Yeah. So it's yeah. yeah, it's not proposing to stray or deviate from the public or the open records right. law. It's yeah, I, I see it as redundant. Just adding to it. What are your thoughts on it, Jason? If you do, you feel like it's re redundant and unnecessary? Well, we've had requests for yeah. the training materials, and I fulfilled it through the public records law. So. Right. So in your I feel it's redundant okay. on that, right. but if it provides clarity to it, I don't care. It just doesn't, it will be one that if we convert over to NOAA, they don't even have one. Theirs is under public records. Yeah. So we could put language in that policy that including training materials. Yeah, what, mean, if, what if we just add it in in one under the yeah, just add it as a just add it add in <coughs> uh open to yada yada yada. Uh, not limited to records, training materials, yada, yada, yada. Or includes, or including, yeah, including but not limited to. Right, yeah, including but not limited to. Uh, training materials, uh, whatever the other. Yeah, I, I think it's unnecessary to have. Well, I, what I like by the, it's as required by law. That's fine as long as that in reproduction is required by law because yeah, as I pointed out before, yes, we don't, you know, notes aren't part of public records. Correct. 
and copyrighted pieces that I can't legally share or pieces right. like that aren't part of public record or yeah. can't be. Yeah. yeah. Um all right, so just include some language in that number one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um parent coach interaction piece. Now I'm gonna I I went and took a stab at this, took you know, yeah, feedback I, from I Adam couldn't and get John. Access. Did you grant the access, Jody? I I did really? grant it. It should work now. Oh, it should. Okay. Check and see. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, that's no problem. Okay. Um, Perfect. I would, in speaking with John, I think part of the process, because I you asked, had the coaches had a chance to review, their <coughs> coaches meeting is the second Wednesday of each month. So my recommendation would be is, you know, we can discuss this if there's anything we want to change. Otherwise, let John review it on that Wednesday and then bring it back again if there's feedback from that group. Yeah, sure. I definitely, I definitely think that the- uh, Yeah, because I'm just now group. having a chance to see this, so. This is modified really well too. This is much better than the original. The only the only question I would have, I was thinking about this today, just because I was speaking um, to John. Do we want to put anything in here specific to and this maybe this is a John question? Do we want to put anything specific to the AD in here too? Because the idea behind this is um, the sleep on a rule or the cooling off rule, and it's for a angry person to avoid that conflict in a heated moment, go sleep on it, then talk to the coach the next day. Mm -hmm. Do we want to... You're saying not, so they don't contact the AD? Do we want to protect the AD as well? The whole thing is protecting the coach from a heated moment after a game because it's extremely inappropriate. Do we want to Do we want to have any kind of language in there to protect the AD as well? That's just, I, I was thinking about it today after, after I got off the phone with John and I don't know, uh, but I wanted to, I wanted to bring it up to the group. Um... Because what's to say if I can't, if I'm an angry parent and you benched my kid and I'm gonna, I'm not allowed to yell at you, coach, but I'm gonna go yell at you, John. <laughs> Somebody's got to yell at somebody. It's a kind of because John, I mean, John's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I so I, I think in that case, that would still be John would be in following this process. Well, this is something to go home, sleep on it, and yeah. then okay. talk to the Which coach about it the next day. Yeah. I think the reason why we specifically say don't, because it's mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm potentially emotionally charged individuals right. because right. It, it's a real coaches get charged too yeah, yeah. yeah. And absolutely emotion yeah. the adrenaline all of that yeah. and so putting that the ad shouldn't be emotionally he wouldn't have that okay charged well, shit. And they should be able to help de-escalate calm or, sure. you know what let's talk about this tomorrow this is something you can address with the coach or go through the yeah process. and like sarah just mentioned that we want the parents to start with the coach, yes. not yeah. to go straight to the AD. Yeah. So, right. and this does yeah. outline this. We ask parents to schedule time to speak with the coach and player, and not to attempt to discuss said concerns immediately after competition. And again, this falls under the disagreements or concerns. Right. Because if there was a health issue or something like that, that's different. You need to talk to the coach. Hey, my kid passed out. What? You know, that's not um, that's that's different. Or tore her ACL again. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, she's got it. She's uh, it's yeah. it's bruised. I'm sorry. It's bruised. We'll know more in January, but uh, yeah. Don't think it's torn. That's it's tough. Really. All right. Um. So we'll let John take it to the coaches and bring it back. Does that sound good? All right. Yeah, I'd like. Yeah, if this is what he came up with. I'd like. Him to, I'd like some input from the coaches and stuff before okay. we send it to the board. All right, very good. That's all we have then. Okay. Well, Ed will be disappointed. He wasn't here for. Should we tell him it went to like three thirty? Because he wasn't here. It was <laughs> yeah. Short. <laughs> short. No. Like the other day when right. Julia wasn't there, so it was forty-three minutes. I know. That's all awesome. fast for me. All right. And there was a long presentation. I think our record is seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Wasn't that Jason's first meeting? No. That no, because it was I All was right. thank you everybody who joined online. Have a great day. It, it happened 